Hello everyone, and today we're going to be looking at the incomplete beta function and its derivative. So, first of all, let's look back at the complete beta function, also known as just the regular beta function or just the beta function. The beta function is defined as beta n m is defined to be the integral from t going from 0 to 1, t being our dummy variable, of dt of t to the n minus 1 times by 1 minus t to the m minus 1, um, where n and m here are can sometimes be variables or um, often in problems and in the problems I'm going to be solving, n and m will just be numbers or some parameters. So um, that's why I've written my beta n and like this. In other textbooks, you sometimes see it written like this, where n and m are more looked at as function arguments. Um, but like I said, in my applications, it's more going to be um, numbers. So I'm going to write my n and m as little subscripts here. OK, and uh, some of you may not like the fact that I've written dt first, but I'm a physicist, so suck it up. Right, now, a beta function is all well and good, but what if you're presented with an integral where the top limit is no longer equal to unity, but is now a variable? Well, in this case, we now need to define a new function, and this function is our incomplete beta function, which is, or the way that I'm going to write it, is going to be like this. So we've now got beta n m, and x is our variable. And this thing here is going to be our incomplete beta function. So considering that I'm taking n and m to be basically constant, um, we can just think of this as a single variable function of x, um, where x is seen in the limit, top limit of the integral here. And um, a few comments just for completeness. Um, sometimes you see in books, well, the first comment I want to make is that sometimes in books you see the incomplete beta function written like this, where the argument x is written like that, and n and m are written like this. Now, I think this is more for applications where n and m are treated more as on equal footing as x. Um, but like I said, in the applications I'm going to be using the beta function for, um, x is much more significant than n and m. So that's why I've written it like this. I hope that's okay. And the, the other things I want to say is that um, beta, the incomplete beta function is um, completely well defined for x going between 0 to 1, um, and that's the that's the limits to which I'm going to be using, or rather the, this is the domain for which I'm going to be using the beta function for. And secondly, it's, it's differentiable it's differentiable over this range as well. Um, and finally, x is a real number. Now, what am I trying to find from this video? Well, I've introduced you to this incomplete beta function, um, but the main crux of this video is that we want to derive it um, to all find its derivative. So what do we want? Well, we want to find out what this function is differentiated, i.e. dv by dx. Um, and just to save space, just so we don't have all these dvxs flying about, I'm going to write this in prime notation, prime of x, and we don't know what this is. So. What, what is it? Okay, well, this isn't so easy to do because our x, instead of being sort of in a nice place, like for example outside the integral, or for example inside the integral, um, in which case we could just move the derivative into the integral, unfortunately our x is seen as in this limit. Um, but Edmund, you might ask, isn't that easy? You know, isn't isn't it just simply this this function, but given it bit of x? Yes, it, it turns out in this case it is, 
but I want to be a bit more complete in this video and I want to actually prove it properly. So, um, because you know, what if you had an x squared here, for example, um, then you, you know, of course it wouldn't be equal to the incomplete beta function anymore, so I'm just going to cover this by hand, but um, you wouldn't just be able to now substitute x into this and say that the, the derivative is just this, but with t replaced with x. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I actually want to do this properly. Uh, there we go, we've got our incomplete beta function back. And we need to use this thing called the Leibniz rule, um, which I'll give here. Or Leibniz, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. And the Leibniz rule states that if you have some kind of integral, which is a function of x, and the, um, the x variable is seen in the limits of the integral, and in this case the limits are themselves going to be functions of x. So the lower limit, um, let's call the dummy variable t, which will, get, which will be found in the integrand. The two limits, um, we'll just call them u of x and um, v of x. And like I said, these are now the limits of themselves functions of x, which is um, the case here. So that's all well and good. And the dummy variable is t, so I'm going to write dt of some function of t, because uh, this rule is for any general function. Leibniz rule says that the derivative of this, this integral with respect to x is going to be equal to um, the function f um, with v of x as its argument, so it's, this is now a composite function, multiplied by the prime of x, and like I said, this works for any general differentiable function um, inside the limit, hence so we'll be keeping this very general. And we, so in a similar way as when you plug limits into, um, into an antiderivative, we just so we subtract now f of u of x multiplied by u prime of x. Okay, so that's our Leibniz formula for our general case of an integral which has variable limits. Okay, now we're ready to finally apply this to our incomplete beta function. So, um, what do we need to do? Well, um, we, in order to find this derivative, we need to define our v of x, our u of x, and what f of t is. Okay, so um, for our incomplete beta function, our f of t here, and actually one important thing to note is that um, I could replace this t with a some other dummy variable. It could be k, it could be um, y, it could be elephant, uh, it could be anything you like. It could be, it could be because this is just a dummy variable, so it doesn't have to be a t, um, but in this case, it, uh, just for simplicity, it is. So f of t for my incomplete beta, so for my incomplete beta, my f of t is equal to t to the n minus 1 times by 1 minus t to the m minus 1. My u of x is equal to 0 here, so my u of x is equal to 0, and my v of x, well, that's equal to x. Okay, now we're ready to substitute in all these things into this formula to finally find our derivative of the incomplete beta function. So, therefore, beta prime n m of x is going to be equal to, well, using Leibniz's formula, it's going to be f of v of x. So we have f um, with v of x in its argument. So pretty much we're just writing down this function here, but with t replaced with x. So this is just going to be um, our f of v of x, therefore, is just x to the n minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus x to the m minus 1. Okay, that's that bit sorted out. Okay, let's move on to v prime. Um, so our v prime of x, well, 
v of x is equal to x, so therefore v prime of x is going to be equal to 1. So we can just substitute that in there, so we've got to multiply that therefore by 1. And we subtract uh, f of u of x minus u prime of x. Now, our u of x is 0. And when you plug in 0 into this function here, you may encounter a problem um, if n, for example, is 0. Because um, remember, n can, we, we, you know, in this whole derivation, we're not fixing n and n to any particular value. Um, we're just treating them as some number, and they could be any number. Um, so our if our n is 0 and we plug 0 into this, then we'll have a problem, because we'll end up with 0 to the minus 1. However, regardless of what this function is, in deriving this Leibniz rule, um, we actually don't have to worry about this side of the formula whatsoever, as long as this limit is a constant. Um, and in this case, it is a constant. In fact, that constant is 0. So actually, we do not need to worry about this term at all. And um, therefore, it's just equal to minus f of u of x. Yes, that potentially may be undefined. But u prime of x is certainly 0. So just equal to 0. Yes, mathematicians may have a problem with that. But I'm a physicist. I'm happy with the um, general derivation. OK. Now let's tidy things up. And we are left with the incomplete beta function and m differentiated with respect to x is equal to x to the n minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus x to the n minus 1. And that's our final formula. Yay! OK. Um, now, of course, that might seem obvious to you from looking at that. And of course, before going through this whole Leibniz thing with, um, with all this stuff in the middle, um, most of you could have written that down yourself. But I wanted to do this for completeness. And perhaps in future videos, um, we'll be using this thing again. So here's a nice little introduction to it and a, a solid proof that um, you can. this is indeed the answer. OK, so I hope you enjoyed that video. And um, thank you for watching.